So if you know me, you know that I'm a Neumann guy. Now, that's kind of like saying that a VO person is into microphones. Neumann is a name that most people in the VO world know and either covet and fetish or love for good reason. And this is arguably one of my favorite Neumann mics ever. This is my TLM-102. I've owned many Neumann mics over the years. It's safe to say that this is probably one of the favorite mics that I own. So why would I willingly move away from what's probably my favorite mic? This is the reason. And admittedly, it's a pretty cool reason. How you doing, everybody? Andrew Scott, and you are back at the VO Bootcamp. So, this is just a really quick video <laughs> that's going to address something that is important to you, whether you recognize it or not. Obviously, our business is one of microphones and microphone choices, and there are all sorts of people like me on the interwebs that have opinions on mics and have opinions that they want to put out there to help you make an informed buying choice when it comes to a microphone that you use for voiceover. But if you followed me or actually, in fairness, many other VO educators on YouTube over the years, you will often hear them say that the microphone actually doesn't really make that much of a difference. And that's absolutely true. I spent the first mm, three quarters of my time in independent professional full-time voiceover doing work on microphones that were less than, say, about $300. And those microphones completely suited my purposes. Nobody ever complained to me about my audio quality. And nobody ever complained to me about the mic that I was using. I would say, honestly, 99% of the time, the people doing the buying didn't even know what mic I was using. Not only did they not know it, they didn't care. They just cared what it sounded like. But you as the talent, as the director, as the producer, you know, you wear all those hats, right? You have your own opinion about microphones. And sometimes those opinions are formed by things like, you know, design specifications, right? Or maybe something like ergonomics, the, the footprint or the size of a microphone and, you know, how effectively you can use it in your space. Now, to speak to that, obviously, I've got, you know, a pretty decent acoustically treated space in here. Uh, is it soundproofed? Absolutely not. Is it perfect? Also, absolutely not. We'll let the planes get out of the way. Nothing better than living next to the airport. But I've got it knocked down to the point where for a lot of my day-to-day -day work, I can do it out here at my desk. If I'm doing something that needs incredible fidelity, then I've got my booth, which is back behind those bookcases. And so I can get away with certain things. And there are times when I feel like getting away with something, I guess is what I'll say. But there are also times where I need that absolute best. And you probably will too if you stick around and get some success in home VO. Because there does come a time when that admonition that all us VO talking heads on YouTube give you about, just use the mic you have. There comes a time when that doesn't mean as much as it did. And that comes with taking a step up the ladder. When you enter into a different realm of voiceover, when you are working for clients that are on the New York Stock Exchange or the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, big names, at times they will care about the microphone. At times, if you start doing directed sessions or if you're patching into studios, 
they might care. Does that mean you need to care in the here and now? No. But there might come a time when you need to make a decision about a purchase, a mic purchase, that does something more for you than simply record your voice. And the truth of the matter is, there are certain circumstances for which the mic you use matters. When you are working for a named studio and they require a particular microphone. I had that happen to me once. Fortunately, I was able to answer that need. But if I'm being honest, it didn't really pay. I mean, it paid, but it didn't really pay for me to go out and get that particular mic to land that one gig. Fortunately, I was able to make that investment stretch out and serve me further. But one of the other things that also happens in this business, as you get further along in your career, your ear starts getting better. Now, one of the things that I often say is that you're really the worst judge of your own voice. And on whole, that still kind of holds true. But you will get better at understanding your voice. You will get better at hearing yourself. And not only hearing yourself, but hearing the things about your voice that make your voice unique. And along with that, you will start to understand that certain microphones, certain designs, certain capsules, certain electronics, they don't make your voice better. But what they do is they make the absolute most out of your voice. Now, to get to this beautiful thing, this is Large Marge. And Large Marge is a TLM 49. I had the ability a number of years ago to do a job in a studio where I heard my voice pretty much like it is now. It was an early morning session, so I had this low voice that I have first thing in the morning. And I was able to hear my voice on this TLM 49, or not this particular one, but a TLM 49. And I suddenly went, wow. That really sounds fantastic. And it does. And it should. Because this mic costs a lot. But the term a lot is relative. Back then, when I first heard myself on the, a TLM 49, I went, that's fantastic. Of course I sound great because this thing cost more than my first two cars. But as time went on and I was able to hear myself on other microphones, even other microphones that people were paying me to use and were perfectly happy with the results, I was able to start discerning differences. Differences in the way the capsule picks up my voice. Differences in the proximity effect. And not only that, that, but differences in the way certain microphones pick me up in certain environments and for certain things. Narration is different than commercial VO. And as you grow in your business, you will start to understand those things about your voice. The reason why I'm saying goodbye to my lovely 102 is because it was kind of a stopgap. Back in the day, I used to use a TLM 103. As time went on and I grew as a home voice producer, I started to understand certain things about my speech idiosyncrasies, my vocal presentation, that I have a slight lisp, that I'm sibilant, that my proximity effect wanes over the day because of the warmth and thickness of my vocal cords and, and that I pitch up as the day goes on. And because I started doing a lot of work in a particular field, and in this case, it's audiobooks, I started to understand that certain mics serve my voice and its recorded presentation better than others. And so I moved over to a TLM 102 from a 103 because I found the 103 exacerbated my sibilance. And while it did give me a nice warm bottom end, when I started to wear thin in the day, 
the 103 really exaggerated that. And I sounded like a completely different person. So I always kind of kept thinking about that experience that I had with that TLM 49. And so I always had it in the back of my head. Where this is all going is this. There's nothing wrong with having a mic in mind that you feel is going to be what we in YouTube VO land often refer to as your forever mic. As I've said in the past, mic fetish is not good. And putting yourself or extending yourself thinly, financially, to get something that you think will be the perfect thing for you, it's also not a particularly wise thing to do. But those two things having been read, once you've had enough experience with microphones to really truly understand which mic does the most for your voice and makes the most of your voice, there is nothing wrong with kind of hanging a target on the wall. And not only that, kind of preparing for the lottery day. So for me, as a mic nerd and a person with a not insignificant amount of gas, funny, I tend to try to stay financially nimble so that if something that I've got as a picture on my wall suddenly shows up, I have the ability to act on it. Now, you guys know me, and you know that I love buying things used. And this is used. And this is something that popped up for me, and I had to do what it takes to get it. I had to do what it takes to get the job done. Because I've known for a long time that this is something that I've wanted. Now, I could have extended myself way far a long time ago, financed this thing, and paid a small fortune every month in order to have this. I didn't have to do that this time because I had that goal in mind, that purchase goal, that capital investment goal in mind. If I ever get a chance to get a TLM 49, under X amount of dollars, I need to be ready for it. Now, sometimes this means squirreling some money away in a separate account. Sometimes this means, oh, it's VO fire sale day. How many people want to buy microphones? You know, but having that foresight after you've gained the experience, the institutional knowledge to know, really know, not kind of guess and hope it's going to be a magic bullet, but really know that that's the thing for you. That can be a really wise approach. And it's certainly much better than impulse buying because somebody or others said, this is the best thing ever. I really have a hard time thinking that any mic is the best mic ever. I mean, right here, I've got my Sennheiser MKH 416. I lovingly and jokingly refer to this as the rod of God uh, because it is arguably one of the best mics available and it is not cheap. I like this out here, but in my booth, interestingly enough, I use my Senko 2D or D2, excuse me. Great microphone. Literally costs one fifth the price. Part of the reason why I own that Sennheiser, though, is because one of my clients in Europe insists that I use it. And that's okay. That's their flow. That's their process. And I've been working for them for years. So effectively, they bought me that by hiring me and keeping me working. This right here, though, is something that I learned about because I had the benefit of experience. And not only the benefit of experience, but the benefit of somebody else's experience. When I road tested this mic the first time, the engineer that I was working with was very familiar with my voice. And on playback, he said, dude, that's your mic. That mic loves your voice. And I had to agree with him. 
And so that's where that picture on the wall came from. Could I have been working without it? Well, I mean, I have up until yesterday, you know, barring having gone into the studio a few times and recorded on one there. This is a really long way of saying that you're going to come across certain mics that you discover either with your own ears or through the ears of somebody else that, yeah, that really makes me sound fantastic with very little effort. But don't. Stretch yourself thin trying to buy a microphone that you only think might be the best mic ever. I'm sitting around here in a studio full of best mics ever. And by the way, watch this space. There might be a sale a coming. But just remember, we really truly mean this when we say that the mic doesn't really matter. The mic doesn't do the performance. The mic doesn't read the copy. The mic doesn't find the places where emotions need to reach out and touch somebody else. That's all on you. And that is all absolutely agnostic of the microphone that you have. Until it's not. And there are going to be times where it's not. And if you can be prepared for it, if you can squirrel a little bit of money away, you could benefit in the same way that I benefited yesterday. Do me a favor. If you've gotten anything out of this rambling video, do me the honor of the like, click, subscribe down below, and join us on the Bootcamp Discord server where you can come and tell me what an absolute idiot I am for loving this mic as much as I do. Until next time, everybody, I'm Andrew Scott, and you've been at the VO Bootcamp. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.